Okay. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our council meeting on October 11th. I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving holiday weekend. Uh, first item is to adopt an agenda, of course, but we need to uh, amend the agenda a little bit. So a recommendation here, uh, sorry, the amendment is to include uh, an item 8D in the items for consideration. This is for World Diabetes Day proclamation. So I have a recommendation here that the agenda for the October 11th, 2022 regular meeting of council as amended be accepted and passed. Could I get a mover and a seconder for that, please? I can move that, Andy. Seconded by Dan. Thanks. Uh, just before I proceed, uh, Matt, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah, through you, Mayor Lennox. Um, would I be able to ask that item 6B be removed from the agenda um, and staff will bring that back to the November 7th meeting? Okay. Matt, do you want it removed or do you just want it deferred? We would pull it for discussion and defer it. What, what would you prefer? I, I anticipate the report will slightly change before the November 7th meeting. Thank you. Okay, so is, is uh, member, all members of council in favor of pulling that out until November the 7th? Okay. So with those two amendments, then the addition of item 8D for the World Diabetes Day Proclamation added and the deletion of, what is it, 6, 6B? Yeah. 6B. Okay. As mover and seconder, you're still okay with that? Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? That's carried. Thank you. And we'll ask if there's any disclosure of pecuniary interest in any items on today's agenda. I have none to declare. Councillor McCabe? I have none. Councillor Yake? Uh, yes, uh, 6E in regards to bylaw 112 22. Okay. So there's the item in the items for consideration plus the bylaw later on. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, uh, Councillor uh, Yake, you, you have to uh, state what the interest is. Oh, there my uh, Ontario Clean Water is my employer. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Hearn. No. Okay, thank you. So next on our agenda is a presentation from uh, Saugeen Valley Conservation Authority, and uh, I see two people on my screen with the name of Jennifer Stevens. So I'm confused, but uh, I'm, I'm assuming one of them is going to give us a presentation this afternoon. And with that, I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Mayor Lennox. Just let me pull up the presentation. There we are. Um, so thank you very much, uh, Mayor Lennox uh, and councillors for your time this afternoon. My name is Jennifer Stevens. I am the general manager at Saugeen Valley Conservation Authority. And the other Jennifer Stevens, who is identified on the screen, is Laura Molson, Saugeen Valley Conservation Authority's Director of Corporate Services, who will be speaking on the last couple slides of this presentation. Today I will be speaking on but our budget for 2023 that we have proposed and have circulated to our area municipalities. Saugeen Valley Conservation Authority is one of 36 conservation authorities across Ontario under the umbrella organization of Conservation Ontario. We are one of 30 31 conservation authorities in Southern Ontario, while there are five conservation authorities in Northern Ontario. I will be speaking primarily about our mandated responsibilities under the Conservation Authorities Act. Saugeen Valley Conservation Authority's overall flood management program encompasses both non-structural approaches designed to keep people away from water, such as regulated regulation of de development in floodplains, flood forecasting and warning, water infrastructure and maintenance, 
and inspection, as well as emergency planning. And then we also have structural approaches which are designed to keep water away from people. These include dams to control the flow of frazzle ice and water, dikes to restrict flows to the proper channel, and channel works to protect slopes from erosion. The backbone of the flood warning program at Saugeen Valley Conservation Authority are the 21 stream gauges located throughout the watershed. These stream gauges are very important to relay routine information concerning watershed river conditions to selected agencies and municipal officials, but also to provide rapid advance warning and technical support to concerned officials and to citizens whose lives and properties may be endangered by floodwaters. All conservation authorities across the province use a standardized color-coded message system to relay information about floods. A watershed condition statement is issued when general watershed conditions suggest high runoff potential that could lead to flooding and to remind the people that rivers, streams, and ponds may be unsafe for recreational or other activities. A flood watch is I issued when the potential for generalized flooding exists throughout the watershed or identified for specific municipalities. And lastly, a flood warning is issued when flooding is occurring or about to occur. It uh, technically applies to a specific area of the watershed. I'll also note that a new standardized message for flood for shorelines was developed amongst CAs in 2020 as high lake levels continue to pose a flood hazard. The definition for the shoreline condition statement is an early notice of the potential for flooding on the Great Lakes based on weather and lake conditions. As this is a new or at least rare ter territory with respect to lake levels, our staff continue to work out criteria that would warrant the issuance of such a message. This may be something our shoreline communities will come to recognize in the future. This is a picture of some of our shoreline or our water control works. You'll note uh, we have a dam on up on the upper left. We have a couple of uh, a dike on the upper right, and then another dam in the lower right. And then we have another, uh, or rather uh, a channel works in the lower left. Our environmental planning and regulations department is composed of a number of tasks. We do plan review and input, which includes planning act applications and development proposals and inquiries. We also have the implementation of regulation 16909, which means we, we issue permits under that regulation. We also enforce under that regulation. And we also provide support to developers and to, to proposals as well as inquiries under that regulation. And lastly, we provide support to individual landowners or municipalities that are interested in doing work in municipal drains, as well as environmental assessments. Through the Delegated Planning Act process, Saugeen Valley Conservation Authority has become an invaluable participant in land use planning around natural hazards. With current weather patterns, it has become evident planning for safe development is critical. Saugeen Valley Conservation Authority's goal is to work collaboratively and cooperatively with our municipal partners to plan for development that would not be impacted by natural hazards. Our first step in natural hazard planning process is to locate development safely away from hazardous lands in accordance with the provincial mandate for public safety. Separate processes for Conservation Authority Act permitting, which provides for technical implementation of matters pursuant to Section 28 of the Conservation Authorities Act, with the end goal of protecting both the natural feature and public safety. Saugeen Valley Conservation Authority must ensure concerns regarding the establishment of the principle of development are conveyed to, pl to planning approval authorities during the preparation of planning of municipal planning documents, such as official plans, 
secondary plans or official plan amendments or during the planning act approvals process and not through the sec the conservation authority act section 28 permitting process i next want to touch on our water quality program which we have an extensive network of a number of sites, which I'll go into detail on a few forthcoming slides. But our water quality program has been established to, to establish baseline water quality data across our watershed, to observe trends in water quality, and to as assess the effectiveness of our watershed programs. Our surface water monitoring program, which you can see on our on the right, takes surface water samples at 29 different stations in an effort to, to understand the watershed. Our groundwater program, which we, you will see on a couple of other slides, has 23 aquifers and we sample at 14 sites across those 23 aquifers. We also collect biomonitoring samples which have sediment, which are taken from the sediment for insect larvae. These different species have different to tolerances for pollution and are thus used in collaboration with the chemistry samples that we take at the 29 different sites. Our groundwater monitoring is quite extensive, taking samples from those, 20, those 23 aquifers. Saugeen Valley Conservation Authority performs level and maintenance checks quarterly. Our water well pump and samples are taken every fall. And we, in addition to taking water level measurements, we also take chemistry measurements in the fall. Our forestry pro program consists of tree planting, for landowners who are interested in, plant, in planting trees on marginal agricultural or fragile land, creating or improving wildlife habitat, establishing windbreaks or planting along stream banks. Landowners who get their property classified as managed, tax, a managed forest pay 25% of the municipal tax rate for, set for residential properties. These individuals take part in the Managed Forest Tax Incentive Program, for which the authority provides support for private landowners. These landowners must prepare a 10-year managed forest plan that details how the forest property will be maintained responsibly. Approximately 90% of SVCA's forested land is produ productive timberland with the remaining portion being comprised of lowland poor quality or inaccessible timber. Saugeen Valley Conservation Authority has a forest management plan which addresses forest health, forest management practices, sustainability, species and ecological diversity, economics, social and cultural concerns, wetland and water system health, property maintenance, education and research concerns, and property acquisition and consolidation. Lastly, the Conservation Air Authority has a number of conservation areas as well as conservation properties. Through the most recent amendments to the Conservation Authorities Act, the Conservation Authority is required to develop a conservation area strategy, which will be required by December 2024. In addition, we will be required to inventory all of our conservation lands so that we can provide that inventory to the province by December 2024. On these properties, we plan and design and maintenance, as well as have improvement pro projects related to those authorities, properties, and structures. With that, I'm going to pass it over to Laura. Laura, you're on mute. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Uh, Thank you for that presentation. And also through you, uh, Mary Lennox, I was just going to describe these last two uh, uh, screens here that we have. 
So on the left is the approved budget for 2022, and you'll see it's split between our non-general levy programs and our general levy programs, which are funded uh, by the general levy collected from our member municipalities. That budget in 2022 was approved at 4.4 million. And then you'll see on the right is the proposed budget for 2023. You'll notice a significant increase. Uh, the budget is proposed at 6 million. The majority of that is actually um, capital water programs that would only be proceeding if we were able to secure funding for those, uh, mostly from the province and also from municipalities who are affected. And then a lot of money also from our reserves to address the hazard tree issues that we do have on our conservation areas and our campgrounds and such. So that's the reason for the big jump. Next slide, please. And this slide just illustrates the impact that the budget will have on the Township of Wellington North. So as you'll see, the general levy last year was just under 74,000 and the proposed levy for 2023 is 81,600. And so that is an increase of about $7,600. And that is my presentation. Thank you. Okay, any questions from council for the SVCA folks? Uh, looks like we're light on questions today. Again, thank you, Jennifer and Laura, for coming and sharing that with us and uh, um, giving us the early look as to what's happening in conservation authorities uh, in our jurisdiction. So again, thank you for your presentation. And I'm sure uh, Councillor McCabe will be bringing back information on us on the progress of your budget deliberations. So, Well, we appreciate the opportunity to speak to you all today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. okay, the next item we have here is uh, a couple of public meetings under the Planning Act. So we'll recess our regular council meeting to do that. <clears throat> I have a recommendation here that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Wellington North recess the October 1st, 2022 regular meeting of council for the purpose of holding a public meeting under the Planning Act for Surinder Chowdhury and Catherine Spark. Did I get a mover and a seconder to that, please? Moved by Lisa, seconded by Steve. All those in favor? That's carried, thank you. So let's just switch to the public meeting here. And uh, I think uh, the first one we had, I'm actually gonna reverse the order just because I think it'll make it more smooth here. So we'll start with uh, the second application, uh, ZBA 22 slash 22 for Catherine Spark. Here we are. Uh, first, we'll uh, call the meeting to order and ask if there's any declaration of pecuniary interest in this, anything on this agenda. Seeing none, we'll the owner applicant in this case is Catherine Spark. The location of the subject land. The land subject to the proposed amendment is described as West Owen Sound Road, part division three and four, part lot 27 with a civic address of 8848 Highway 6. The property is 41.26 hectares in size. The purpose and effect of the proposed amendment is to rezone the subject lands from agricultural zone to site-specific agricultural A2 zone and site-specific agricultural A.XX zone. So this application is seeking to rezone the retained agricultural portion of the property to prohibit any future residential development. Additionally, the applicant is seeking to rezone the severed lands from the agricultural A zone to site-specific agricultural A-XX zone to permit a maximum ground floor area for all existing accessory structures on the severed lands to be 629 square meters. This rezoning is a condition of severance application B44-22 that was granted provisional approval by the Wellington County Land Division Committee. 
The consent will sever 1.16 hectares rural residential parcel with an existing dwelling, garage, silo, and outbuilding. A 40.1 hectare vacant agricultural parcel will be retained. Uh, additional relief may be considered at this meeting. How are notices given for this public meeting? Notices were mailed to property owners within 120 meters of the subject property and as well mailed to the applicable agencies. Signage was posted on the property on September 15, 2022. Great, thank you. Uh, Matthew, can you give us the presentation on this, please? For sure, will do. Thank you, Chair. Um, and good evening, or I suppose good afternoon, members of Council um, and the public. So. Again, through you, Chair, before you today is a zoning bylaw amendment to rezone the subject lands from agricultural to agricultural site specific. Uh, the applicant has received conditional approval, as mentioned on severance application B4422 under the surplus farm dwelling policies. Um, and under these policies, a standard condition is placed that the retained farmlands are rezoned to prevent any future residential. Uh, furthermore, the applicant is seeking to rezone the severed parcel once again from agricultural to agricultural site specific to permit a maximum ground floor area for all accessory structures to be a maximum of approximately 6,770 square feet. Uh, so all in all, the application conforms to the zoning bylaw official plan and provincial policies and planning staff have no concerns with the application and I'm happy to take any questions. Great. Uh, thanks, Matthew. Uh, has any further correspondence been received in respect to this application? Yes, today we received a letter of concern from the Wellington Federation of Agriculture. Uh, their concerns are that agricultural land should be retained for agricultural uh, purposes. Fragment fragmentation prevention should be a lens for all zoning requests. Uh, they are, they note the in their opinion, the retained parcel of 2.9 acres is excessive, and the existing accessory structure of 629 meters squared is quite large, and they're wondering about what this use would be. Uh, for the above reasons, they seek consideration for restricted use and clarification of intended use of accessory structures. Uh, <clears throat> any uh, is there anybody registered to speak in regard to this application here uh no one with me but i know uh, the applicant is here i'm not sure if you want to speak so i see uh catherine and paul spark do you wish to speak to this application at this point be able to see you in that camera and they'll be able to hear you on the mic. I know. <laughs> um, the reason we want this uh, piece of land uh, severed is because we have a daughter who um, uh, suffers from depression and needs her family close by. And we are farming the farm beside it and the one that she's on right now and the one across the road. And um, we feel that um, she requires uh, her family to be close because that's the nature of her problem. Uh, actually, the, the land won't change anything from what it has been. It will be the same. The farm is tentatively sold, um, providing we can get this piece off for her. And um, the shed that is there, we use for um, our own hay storage and uh, machinery storage and that kind of thing. So like, it's really, it's really needed for our own operation. It's just that we need to have a place for her to stay. Um, 
I don't know what else I can say. Okay. No, that's that's great. Just shut it off. Thank you. Okay. Um, did any questions or comments from council? Okay. No. So with that, uh, we'll move to uh, our next application. Anyone wishing, sorry, I, I missed. Anyone wishing to be uh, notified of the decision, um, notice of the passing of the bylaw must submit a written request. We will be dealing with the bylaw in our regular council meeting following this public meeting. There's nothing further on that. We'll switch to our other application. This is application ZBA 21 slash 22 for surrender Chaudhry. And the location of the subject land, the land subject proposed amendment is described as part park lot two south of Smith Street, Carroll Survey part, part lots six and nine and municipally known as 152 Frederick Street West. The property is 0 0.92 hectares in size and with an existing commercial use. The purpose and effect of the proposed amendment is to rezone the subject land from holding central commercial zone to high density residential R3 zone to facilitate the construction of a 55 to 59 unit four story apartment building. Additional relief may be considered at this meeting. How are notices given for this meeting? Notices were mailed to property owners within 120 meters of the subject property and mailed to the applicable agencies. Signage was posted on the property on September 14, 2022. Okay, thank you. Matthew, can you give us the rundown on this application, please? For sure, gladly. So again, through you, Chair, before you is a zone amendment seeking to rezone the subject land from Central Commercial, or sorry, Holding Central Commercial, so HC1 zone, to Holding Residential HR3. Uh, the purpose of this meeting today is really to go over the proposal and, uh, and allow the public and council an opportunity to express any comments or concerns and ask any questions and sort of seek additional information from the developer and consultants. Um, so to provide a quick overview of the subject lands, um, they are currently occupied by two existing commercial buildings. Um, which are proposed to be demolished. The applicant is proposing a 55 to 59 unit four story apartment building. On the policy side of things, the subject lands are designated residential in the county official plan, as well as a small portion um, is designated central business district. The lands are currently zoned, as I mentioned, um, holding central commercial, so HC1 in the Wellington North zoning bylaw. Uh, planning staff do note the proposal is in line with county official plan density targets. Uh, the applicant has submitted a zone amendment to rezone the subject lands to facilitate the proposed apartment building. Um, and planning staff note that there is currently no site specific request. So in short, the proposal meets all requirements of the R3 zone. Uh, one note as it relates to zoning um, is staff is seeking um, that the holding provisions remain on the subject lands until the applicant has received approval for services. Um, so from the public perspective, what this means is the applicant uh, will not be able to build until council and staff allocate X number of units for sewage capacity. Um, so lastly, I would note um, the proposal is subject to site plan approval where some of the smaller grain details such as landscaping, fencing, um, amenity areas, et cetera, will all be looked at at that stage with, with uh, like I said, finer grain detail. Um, so just wrapping up here in terms of next, next steps, the following the public meeting staff will finalize the review of the proposed rezoning and the public and council's comments. Uh, we will report back to council at a later date with any proposed revisions based on uh, this afternoon's discussions and seek council consideration on a draft zoning bylaw. So with that said, I know MHBC, um, the applicants planning consultants are in attendance. 
Um, and I'm sure they've prepared sort of a little discussion um, as well as slides and uh, we'll be answering questions from the public. So thank you. Thanks, Matthew. We have a number of uh, items of correspondence with regard to this application on our agenda. Has any further correspondence been received in respect to this application? Yes, uh, we received uh, correspondence today by email from Hannah Kayer and Robert Wilson, uh, who live at 150 Frederick Street West. They would like uh, to ensure trees are high privacy fencing, uh, as this is a new development and they would be 100% opposed to the building and parking. Wellington North Federation of Agriculture who support the intensification and correspondence from Robert Wilson and Hannah Law. I think it was the same letter. Uh, that they support um, Sean William Cook's letter dated September 27th, which is on the agenda. And they ha also have concerns, zero privacy from their property, lack of sidewalks near the area. Okay. Thank you. Okay, sorry, that was my oversight. Sorry about that. So we have, uh, is it Julianne? Okay, sorry. I'm just looking for them right now. All right. Good afternoon, uh, Mayor Lennox and members of council staff, ladies and gentlemen of public. My name is Julianne von Westerholt. I'm an associate at MHPC Planning in Kitchener, and I'm here with the members of the project team, including Melissa Visser from our office at MHPC Planning, as well as the project architect, Caroline Prochaka. Uh, also, I believe on the call is our client. Um, I'm here to make a brief pre presentation and to respond to any questions you may have regarding the proposal. So do we have the proposal? I don't, I'm so sorry. They're in the, they're, they're in the agenda package. Do you have, Darren, if you can email them to me, I can put them up. Do you have them? I was hoping to have that. That is right, thanks. Okay, just give me a second. It'll just be a minute or two while we kind of get some stuff sorted out here. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'll have to put, I'll put the agenda package up on the screen. Uh, yeah. Okay, just give me a second. Sorry about that. Share my screen. There you go. Thank you very much. So this is a this is just a um, a brief rendering which will show the scale of the development within the the context of of the the neighborhood. Um, if I could have the next slide, please. Thank you. This is an aerial view of the subject lands, uh, which have an area of approximately 0 0.9 hectares, or for those of us that are still familiar with acres, it's 2.3 acres. The site currently contains um, single story garages and some outdoor storage of vehicles. The site fronts onto Frederick Street and will be on full municipal services. Next slide, please. These are conceptual um, drawings showing the proposed um, building with the four story building uh, approximately show, uh, with uh, 55 to 59 units. Next slide, please.
This is the site plan which shows the layout of the property and the location of the proposed building, which is the area in pink uh, where the arrow is pointing currently. And um, it shows that just to recap, the building will have four stories and a number of units are within a range of 55 to 59 units. The exact configuration of the units isn't exactly known at this time, therefore the range has been provided. Um, for, but for example, for a 55 unit concept, the unit breakdown could be something in the neighborhood of this, that there be approximately 26 uh, one bedroom units, perhaps 25 two bedroom units, and four to four at three bedrooms. So that just gives you an idea of the type of unit breakdown. So it'll contain um, uh, one, two, and three bedroom units, which you know provides a variety of options for people that are proposing to uh, reside here. Um, and the 59 unit concept has a similar breakdown with uh, approximately 36 one bedroom and 19 two bedrooms and about four three bedroom units. That's it for the formal presentation, um, but uh, we are open to having any questions or discussions from members of the public or, or council if you have any. And I'm happy to assist you in that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so the bylaw will be considered at a future, regarding this will be considered at a future council meeting. Persons wishing notice of the passing of the bylaw must submit a written request. And with that, I'll open the floor for any questions or comments from the, the applicant and or the public. Uh, Karen, do we have anyone registered to speak on this application? Yes, Heather Hayes is on the line. She's uh, on the she's on the call, on the Zoom call. Okay. Heather, if you can hear us, uh, here's, a, here's your opportunity. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for uh, allowing me to have a, a, an opportunity to speak to this. Um, first off um thanks for everything that you do i've done this job before and it's it's not an easy job and uh, so i appreciate you guys taking the time um to look at this um second we're relatively new residents uh, to wellington county we moved in september and our place um backs on to um, the parking structure that will be attached to this building and we do have a few concerns um although we are in favor of this application um as you can see, I, I happen to have the privilege of running the Orangeville Food Bank, and housing is a very, very difficult thing at this point. I know in Dufferin County, there's an 11 year wait list right now for um, affordable housing, so it's it's definitely needed. Some of our concerns, um, though, and, and they've been raised by um, other individuals in the area, and I know this is going to affect Hannah and Bob. Um, I'm directionally challenged, so I have no idea which direction it is for my house, but if I look at my house, it's to the left. I have no idea where it is, though. Um, so they're to the left, um, and I also know that Sean and his lovely wife and their, their new uh, baby, it's going to affect them much greater than it will affect Mike and I, um, but I'm wondering if we could look at three stories versus four, somehow change the layout that way. Um, parking is a bit of a concern because at one point, uh, five um, units allotted uh, for parking. I'm not sure few people can get around these days without a vehicle. Um, and at uh, 55, 59 units, I think more parking might be necessary, I don't know. Um, and of course the biggest piece uh, right now for us is the traffic. Uh, the farm equipment that comes up and down that road, um, while it's not moving fast, it sounds like it's moving fast. Um, when you add more traffic to that, I, I think that could be a problem. I know that uh, to my right of my house, Melissa was hit a few years ago um, and had asked for traffic studies to be completed on that um, particular road. So um, my question is, um, how will we deal with that piece? And has the traffic study been done? And the last piece is, is it possible to consider an entrance on six? I know a lot of this stuff will be decided later, but I'm putting it on the table now for consideration. Um, but it does concern me. I have sat on a fire board before and with only one entrance into um, 55, 59 units, um, I would hate for something to happen to that unit and that, or that entrance and then not have access um uh, for emergency vehicles to to access that property okay uh thanks heather um 
there's a number of considerations there that we need to probably dig into a little bit. Uh, but uh, first, I'll see if there's anyone else uh, wants to speak to this application. Do we have anyone else registered to speak, Karen? There's no one else registered to speak, uh, but I do know uh, your client is um, on the call. Did he did he want to speak? Okay. 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 So we have a, have a number of issues raised with uh, these. Uh, correspondence and of course the person attending to, did you have any specific comments to address some of those concerns certainly through you mr chair what i can what i can speak to let's let's um, speak to the, the the issue of traffic for instance that seems to be one that was resonating um quite highly with some of the comments that came in that i was that i had been uh forwarded from from your staff which i'm grateful for um, in terms of traffic, um, there has been a traffic study done as part of the requirements for the submission of this application. The traffic opinion letter was completed by a professional um, transportation engineer, and it was indicated in that study that no road improvements were required, so that could speak to, you know, access and what have you. Um, traffic impacts that were, uh, were identified would be minimal and can be accommodated with the current capacity of the roadway. Um, the site uh, was found to have an acceptable access for the proposed development and an additional access to Smith Street was not recommended. The proposed development is in close proximity to the uh, core commercial area and active transportation is an anticipated, which could potentially reduce uh, vehicular trips. So you could walk uh, people that aren't necessarily always going to be in their vehicles. People can walk, people can cycle. They're very close to the downtown core. Um, with respect to parking, uh, it's on-site parking. It's not structured parking. It's part of a part of the just. It's just a parking area around the building, so there's no structured parking. Uh, there will be landscape buffer provided around uh, the the site, in accordance with uh, the requirements of the zoning bylaw. And as we heard earlier from the county planner, all of the zoning regulations pertinent to this proposed zone have been satisfied. So that also speaks to the number of parking spaces. Uh, the ratio was 1.5 spaces per unit, which is kind of a typical standard for multiple dwellings. I know even in cities such as Kitchener, for example, they have even lower than that, but they also have an LRT, which we don't hear. But, um, but they, uh, they have considered in, for apartments and things of that nature, anywhere between 1.5 and 1.25 spaces a unit. So it's very typical standard. And um, again, the traffic study looked at that in terms of the site's ability to accommodate the, the demand. So that was something that um, definitely has not been neglected. And um, in terms of the, the logistics or the dynamics of what the parking area and what the site would look like with the landscaping, fencing and vegetation surrounding the site, um, this site will be subject to what's called site plan approval. Mm -hmm. And site plan approval, as, as uh, Matthew from the county mentioned, that's where you get into the details, all the details of the site. So things like what kind of fencing, how high the fencing would be, uh, what kind of landscaping accompanies that, um, how the area will function, uh, a fire route. We, we also heard about fire trucks and there being concern about um, fire vehicles being able to enter the site. It is a very large site, so I, I don't foresee that as being a problem. I'm I have never driven a fire truck though, so I, I, I will leave, leave it at that. However, um, that said, um, all of those matters are things that are dealt with at site plan approval. And um, so by having the holding provision on, uh, which Matthew has indicated, anything uh, dealing with servicing, there was also some concerns about, you know, whether there was adequate, adequate capacity for servicing this site. Um, none of that will be dealt with until, you know, we have a clearance from the municipality that um, servicing is adequate. And then and only then can a bylaw be brought forward to this council again to be lifted. And then um, only then can development occur. So I, I think I've covered most of the comments or concerns. I'm just going to go through my notes to see if there's anything else. But um, yeah, there were some some concerns about um, runoff and or um, any potential impacts of grading to property too. That was one other concern that was brought up 
in the correspondence. Again, grading, that grading plans are a necessary part of a site plan approval component. So that's something that is de definitely dealt with at, at the detail of site plan. Um, grading plans are approved by the municipality and or if they have sub consultants that work for them, they are the ones that would look after the approval of those plans. Um, there was also a comment about accommodation within schools, the Upper Grand District, I believe it, yeah, it was Upper Grand uh, District School Board was circulated on the application and had no objection to the, to the proposal. That would have been their opportunity to indicate whether there was a concern or, with respect to shortage of uh, schools, schools in the area or not, and, and there was none that were flagged. Um, with respect to tree management and or removal of trees, certainly the intention is where, where possible to keep the trees that are in place to help with you know, pro provision of screening, but certainly we re respect that trees are, are something that is important to everyone. Um, but uh, there, is, there is obviously sometimes the need to remove trees uh, as development proceeds. I did have a look at the site. It, the trees seem to be on the perimeter of the property. It's fairly clear right now. The site is fairly um, open. And another concern was the lack of sidewalks. The site itself uh, proposes a sidewalk from the, from the proposed uh, um, um, apartment building to the, to the roadway. Uh, perhaps as part of the site plan approval, I don't know what, what arrangements will be asked of the developer at that time with respect to provision of sidewalks. But I did note that there are no sidewalks along this stretch of Frederick Street. So perhaps they will be extended at some point in time, but I can't speak to that. That's something that the municipality will have to, have to uh, I guess, indicate at that time at the site plan approval time. So um, I believe, and privacy was also, that's something that, you know, discussions can be had with, with our client and, 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 and with us in terms of, you know, provision of fencing and at the site plan stage, landscaping that can also help with that privacy issue. Again, where we can save trees, I think the intent is to save as many as we can. Um, but sometimes it is necessary to remove some trees. And other than that, I think I've addressed most of the questions or comments, unless council had any specific questions of me. Okay, well, we're just gonna get to that, so. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, Heather, did you have, uh, before we go to council, did you have something in particular you, yep, you wanted I, to address? I just wanted to address a, a couple of things. Could we have um, the people who have been circulated on this, could we have the traffic study uh, sent to us so that we can look at that, please? And what year was the traffic study done? For you, Mr. Chair, it was done this year. Okay. And it's, it's a, 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 a brief, a, a letter, a letter of, of opinion from a traffic engineer. That was what was requested as part of this submission. So could we see the actual study versus the letter? This, the, the, it contains data for, for, the, uh, for the study, so. Okay. That is the study. The study is, is a condensed, is a, is a brief. Okay, so yeah, so, yeah, that. You can have access. Darren, to go ahead. Um, yes, if a request is sent in uh, to Tammy Pringle, our development clerk, uh, that uh, forms part of the application and that can be circulated uh, for sure. Okay, so thank you for that. Um, and and um, I appreciate that a lot of my concerns um, were spoken to. I'm not sure that they're addressed uh, to my satisfaction, but you know, that that's life. Um, I noticed that the fire chief is on here. Has the fire chief been consulted about um, this particular uh, project and making sure that the trucks can move around and the, the access is, is okay for his department? Because as the um, uh, individual um, expressed, um, we don't all drive fire trucks, so I don't always know <laughs> what that looks like. Uh, Chris, do you want to tackle that? For sure, yeah. <clears throat> Through you, Mr. Mayor, yeah. Um, we do look at all the applications that come in and make sure that our entrance to it, and there is uh, uh, regulations and that, that we follow, make sure it's followed that we can get in and get out um, for emergency vehicles. So you're happy with this? Um, yeah, like we will work with the developer on the, the site application and that and make sure it is to our satisfaction. Okay. And then the last piece um, was that um, I mentioned a three-story versus a four-story. Is there any willingness to take this down? Because if I'm not mistaken, this would be the four, first fourth-story um, structure in Arthur, if I'm not mistaken, but I could be. Okay. 
Um, I'll throw that back to you. Through you, Mr. Chair, uh, at this time, the proposal is for four stories. Um, given that the entire province is in a housing crisis right now, it's very important to be able to provide additional housing that is uh, more affordable and that provides an alternative to, for instance, single detached homes and what have you, because not everybody is in the same uh, place in their lives or, or uh, same place in terms of their um, financial ability to acquire private homes. So uh, I would respectfully just respond that the, uh, the item on the uh, before council or before the public today is and remains to be the four story proposal uh, between 55 and 59 units. Okay, thank you. And there will be affordable ish units within this building. Because you mentioned affordable housing. So there, so there will be affordable house uh, units included within the 55 or 59 units? Through you, Mr. Chair, I mentioned that this is a more affordable option rather than single detached dwellings. So no, I'm not at this time prepared to say that there will be affordable units. Okay, thank you. And then back to the mayor, could, could council look at asking for a couple of affordable units within that? and set what the affordable rate would be. We've often heard that affordable housing is $1,500 to $2,000, which is not affordable for anybody. <laughs> and it gets my son out of my house. Uh, so <laughs> love hearing what I'm saying. Um, but uh, if we could look at affordable units, that would be awesome. Okay, and I'm done. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. With that, I'll open the floor to council for questions or comments. Uh, maybe before I do though, I just, we just want to quickly review the process. So we're at the rezoning stage right now uh, where we're really looking at the suitability of the location for the uh, application before us. Uh, we, if this is, if we do believe that this is a suitable location for this application, then there will be other steps we go through things like site plan approval that will deal with some of the more detailed information around accessibility for emergency uh, uh, vehicles, uh, fencing, privacy mitigation or privacy improving privacy issues and those types of things uh, so this this we're not dealing with those specifically today but certainly any objection in those things is certainly heard by the applicant and by council and when we get to the site plan process the expectation is that we'll work to address those concerns um, but uh, they were just at the beginning stages of this process as we work towards a resolution so with that, I'll open the floor for any questions or comments from council. Steve, go ahead. Yeah, and through you, and thank you for that presentation as well. I think as, uh, as we go forward to the uh, site uh, approval, as long as the uh, residents around bordering this uh, application or the proposed development are, are heard and, uh, and addressed, then uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to go forward with this as well. Okay. Other questions or comments? Dan, go ahead. I didn't see, and maybe it comes later, but I don't see any provision for stormwater. Is that uh, the stormwater management part of this site, or does that come at a later date? Julian? Through you, uh, Mr. Chair, stormwater uh, is an issue that is dealt with at the site plan approval stage. Uh, there is no requirement uh, to put on sites stormwater management facility. So I, I, I can't speak to all the technicalities of it. I am not an engineer, so I'm not gonna go out of my purview to speak about that. But it is a matter that is dealt with uh, also at the site plan approval stage. Dan, did you have anything further? Uh, yeah, just one other question. I guess I'll uh, refer this to uh, uh, Chris. Uh, in regards to fire services, do we have the ability to uh, handle or deal with uh, a, a structure fire of four stories? Go ahead. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, yeah, for sure. Um, we have agreements with neighboring fire departments for aerial apparatuses, but uh, with these new builds that are four stories and, and bigger, they, um, they usually they uh, uh, are built to the building code with sprinklers and that, so they actually hold fires better than what, um, an, or, an older building would. So um, concerns with these buildings are not that much for sure. Okay, go ahead, Dan. 
but I guess we still need to we still need to uh, get there, right? I mean, if we're we still need to uh, if there's a fire or an incident, we need to uh, be able to deal with it, whether there's sprinklers or not. Isn't that would that be the case? Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and we can get there, no problem. Um, we have the trucks that we have now, and the, in the first hour we have now is uh, no problem getting there. Um, and actually, the sprinklers do what they're supposed to do and hold the fire for us to give us the time to get there and, and mobilize to to put a fire out in this. So hopefully that answers your question. Or okay, no, fair enough. Other questions from council? Okay, so I just uh, just want to go back in my own mind. Uh, so we've heard comments about uh, traffic and we have the, the traffic study to deal with that. We've heard concerns around buffering and privacy and that to be dealt with. Uh, we've heard concerns around emergency vehicle access and hopefully that can be dealt with. Um, so uh, if there's anything further that I'm not, not thinking of, uh, then perhaps uh, we should talk about it now. But I think uh, there's been a effort to address a number of those and certainly we can work to addressing them as we go through the site plan process. Anybody have anything else that they want to raise at this point? Okay, so just uh, Darren, could you just remind me of the next steps in the process here, please? Uh, thank you, Mayor Lennox. Um, so based on the public meeting, um, our Township Planner will be bringing back a, uh, a report with a draft bylaw for Council's consideration. Uh, once that's passed, uh, the applicant can then apply for site plan approval and work through that process. Um, that approval uh, through Bill 109 has been delegated to staff. Um, but once that's um, dealt with, then we'll be back for um, removal of the holding provision bylaw and we'll be back with. Um, uh, sewage unit allocation. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> um, so we're not dealing with the bylaw at today's meeting, but we will be dealing with it at a future council meeting. So anyone wishing notice of the passing of the bylaw would uh, please submit a written request. Um, and I think that's it for their public meeting today. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I think that uh, brings us to our adjournment of the public meeting. So I have a recommendation here that the public meeting of October 11th, 2022 be adjourned at 2.57 p.m. Did I get a mover and a seconder for that, please? Moved by Lisa, seconded by Steve. All those in favor? That's carried. Thank you. We're adjourned from the public meeting. We'll switch back to our regular council meeting agenda and resume that. So I have a recommendation here that the Council of Corporation of the Township of Wellington North uh, resume the October 11th, 2022 regular meeting of council at uh, 2.58 p.m. Can I get a mover and a seconder for that, please? Moved by Dan, seconded by Steve. Thank you. All those in favor? That's carried. Even so then uh, coming out of the public meeting, we have a bylaw with regard to the one application. And uh, the recommendation is as follows, that bylaw number 111-22, a bylaw to amend bylaw 66-01, being a zoning bylaw for the Township of Wellington North, be read a first, second, and third time and enacted. This is in regard to West Owen Sound Road, part division three and four, part lot 27, with a civic address of 8848 Highway 6 for Catherine Spark. Can I get a mover and a seconder for that, please? Moved by Steve, seconded by Dan. Any discussion on that? All those in favor? That's carried, thank you. So we'll move on to uh, adoption of the minutes of the council and public meeting. So we have a special meeting of council on September 26th and a regular meeting of council as well. So we have a recommendation here that the minutes of the special meeting of council and the regular meeting of council held on September 26th, 2022 be adopted as circulated. Could I get a mover and a seconder for that, please? Moved by Steve, seconded by Dan. All those in favor? 
That's carried. Thank you. We'll move on to items for consideration. Is there uh, anything that anyone would like to pull out for further discussion? <clears throat> Steve, go ahead. Uh, through you, Mayor. Thank you. Um, I would like to pull uh, 2A. Okay. Um, 4A, the economic development <clears throat> grants and donations, and uh, 6A, uh, Preston uh, Street Partnership with uh, Cache Developments. Any others uh, that anyone would like pulled out? Dan, go ahead. Well, how are we dealing with six, six E? We've we've removed it. It'll come oh, okay. back to the meeting. Okay. Our next meeting. Okay. 6E or 6 Oh, sorry. Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, Dan. I, I got the wrong one I was thinking of. For Aqua. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we'll pull that one out as well. Uh, where am I here? That one is going to be... 6. E. 6E. Yeah, so we'll pull that one out. Sorry, I misunderstood you, Dan. Okay, well, it was 6B that we were pulling out. Yeah, 6B we removed from the agenda right. at the beginning, and then 6E we'll pull it out because of your pecuniary interest. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any others? No, I don't have any. Got them all. Okay. Okay, I'll just do a quick recap. We are pulling out 2A. This is the consent application for Maple Land Company. We're pulling out 4A, the EDO report regarding community improvement program. We're pulling out 6A with regard to cache developments uh, agreement with Preston Street. Um, and we're pulling out 6E with regard to the proposed agreement with Aqua. And just uh, when we get further in the agenda under bylaws, uh, we'll have to pass those two bylaws separately uh, because one is the aqua bylaw. So Dan uh, won't be able to vote on that one. Okay. So last call for any others to be pulled out. All right, so let's to the recommendation to adopt all the rest uh, is as follows that all items listed under items for consideration on the October 11th, 2022 council agenda with the exception of those items identified for separate discussion, be approved and the recommendations therein be adopted. Could I get a mover and a seconder for that, please? Moved by Lisa, seconded by Steve. All those in favor? That's carried, thank you. We'll go back to 2A now. And I don't think I'm going to read that whole recommendation. I trust that you have that in front of you with regard to that one. Um, could I get a mover and a seconder for that uh, I can recommendation? Move. Moved by Steve. Seconded by Lisa. Thank you. And with that, I'll open the floor for discussion. Steve, go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks. And through you, Mayor Lennox, I uh, read this uh, report on the Craig's uh, um, wanting to sever that uh, little chunk. And uh, I'm not sure anyone from the land division or from the county has ever set foot on that piece of property, have they, by chance? Uh, I can't speak to that. Uh, I know that staff will have put the signs on the property when the application is. Because I have a hard time believing that this is actually prime agricultural land. I've lived here almost all my life and there's been nothing but uh, there's trees on it and scrub brush. And I would say at best, it's very marginal, even sub marginal land. And for this uh, owner to want to sever that and retain the rest of the land for prime agriculture, um, for him to build uh, his own house so he can retire on his own land. I have absolutely no issue with, with that at all. Okay. 
Any other questions or comments? Okay, so in this case, uh, staff are not recommending uh, uh, approving this or endorsing this uh, application. And that's the way the recommendation reads. Uh, anything any different, we would need to amend the recommendation. Um, so is any 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 further comments or questions on regard to this one? Thanks. Ben? Steve? Yep. I guess um, uh, we have a county on and then we have the staff report not recommending this. I guess aside from reading um, their recommendation, I guess, is, is there a better explanation for this other than it's, well, they call it prime, uh, prime egg land and, and it is anything but. I'd like a, maybe a further explanation on, uh, on that. So in terms of the definition of prime egg, is that what you're? Uh, no, I would say why they actually want to turn this down because if they have actually been there to have a look at it, they would uh, recognize that this is actually you can't grow anything on it aside from the scrub brush that's on it right now. And uh, in talking to the applicant, uh, I don't believe they're thinking of taking any of the trees down, but the scrub brush to build their residence. Okay, Matthew, I see you popped up. Can you uh, give us a little primer on this? Sure, yes, yeah, through you, Chair. Um, so it's not my file, so I'll add that caveat in there. But uh, I did speak to the landowner when they originally called in about this inquiry. Um, and sort of our role when we're writing these consent applications is really to look at things from a policy perspective. I can appreciate, uh, you know, Councillor McCabe's point about, you know, it's scrub and, and it'll never be sort of prime egg in quotations. Um, but like I said, our role is really to look at things from a policy perspective and outline you know what the PPS um, is really look at looking at in terms of you know prime ag land and, and discouraging um, you know additional lots from that lens. Um, again, in the county official plan, you know prime ag it's it's discouraged to have additional lots. Um, and beyond sort of the prime ag uh, sort of lens of, lens of things, the introduction of a new lot it does introduce an additional sensitive land use. So, you know, if this gentleman was to ever expand his barn, there is an additional residence that's now on that new severed lot, which like I said, introduces a new sensitive land use, which impacts MBS and a whole, you know, plethora of, of other potential issues. Um, so yeah, like I said, to summarize things, we're really looking at it from a policy lens and that's, you know, hence why there's the no support there. Cause like I said, it, it, the prime ag vacant lot severances just don't jive with, you know, the PPS as well as the county official plan sort of direction for prime ag lands. Um, I'd say perhaps the land division committee sort of takes on the role of looking at things from, you know, everyone's point of view and including, you know, uh, perhaps a landowner and, and on their boots on the ground to sort of, sort of lens. Thanks, Matthew. Steve? So, oh, I'm on. Um, so right now, there's no issues with the MDS right now. If, say, this house was built tomorrow from the existing uh, uh, barns and uh, buildings that are on the original homestead right now. Are you prepared to answer that one, Matthew? Yeah, so just, uh, again, through you, Chair, um, let me just quickly read through it here. Uh, so it appears just reading through the report that it does not meet, I can't tell you exactly to which lot or which house, but it appears there is an MDS issue. So they will need MDS relief, um, you know, ultimately to, to satisfy all the conditions of the severance. Okay. Thank you. Dan, go ahead. I guess just in the, in, response to Councillor McCabe's uh, concern question. Is this something maybe Councillor McCabe that you'd like maybe to send back to the county to have them review it again and, and look at it, take another second look at it or, or do we just move forward? 
just in terms of process, this is actually before it's considered by land division. We're just making our recommendation before it goes to land division. Okay, all right. Any other questions, Lisa? Um, and getting back to the, the prime ag component of this, um, I, I, I'm not sure that it's for anyone to say whether it can, can actually be farmed or not. I believe the county considers class one, two, and, and three land to be prime ag. Um, whether it can be cropped is maybe a whole other matter. Um, something like sheep, which we, or, or various ruminants could, could graze that property, it's still useful for agriculture. And I think we need to, to embrace that in the whole scope of the system here. Um, so I'm not sure that that's a, basing everything on being able to crop it is, is necessarily a valid argument. We need to think about that. If we were to go back, I think um, some sort of agricultural impact analysis would need to be done on the property. Okay, any other discussion? Okay, I'll uh, call the motion then. All those in favor? Opposed? Okay, so that's defeated. Boy, we haven't done that very often. Okay, so I guess what this means, so there's a couple of things here that I, I'm concerned about. Uh, one is that ultimately this is a decision of the County Land Division Committee. And there's a number of conditions that we've attached to this that we want, should they uh, approve it? Um, and I think it might be in our best interest to uh, consider sending those requests, even though this was defeated at this point. Darren, I see you grabbed the microphone. Have you got any thoughts in regard to that? Okay, great, thank you. Lisa, I see your hand up. I'm sorry, uh, Darren, I couldn't couldn't hear you on trouble right Well, here. we're gonna ask him to do it again, word for word, exactly, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I sat down, I turned the mic off instead of on, so. Uh, <laughs> so if we proceed with direction to staff to forward, uh, forward the comments listed, or the conditions listed in the report on, uh, we'll do that. And then the uh, the county planners can factor those into their report to uh, to land division. Okay, so is is council uh, agreeable to uh, providing that direction, even though this has been a defeated recommendation? Any objection? No. no. So I think we can ask staff to forward those recommended conditions should should they approve this. Yep. Okay. Thank you. We will move on to 4A. And this is in regard to the community improvement program. So I have a recommendation here that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Wellington North receive report EDO 2022-26, being a report on community improvement program and grants and donations community development fund. And further the council approves community improvement grants as follows up to $2,500 for Shavita Kang Physiotherapy Professional Corp at 190 Main Street South in Mount Forest, 15, excuse me, $1,500 to Arthur Greenhouses at 7460 and 7470 Second Line Arthur, and up to $1,000 to I'm So Bad at 110 Main Street North in Mount Forest, and further that council approves community development fund fee waivers for the following two organizations, $1,806.87 to Hayden's Hope Foundation to support Childhood Cancer Awareness Month and the inaugural Strikeout Cancer Ball Tournament and Dance and $200 to provide two hours free skating on November 25th to support the Arthur Countdown to Christmas 2022 celebrations. <clears throat> Did I get a mover and a seconder for that, please? Moved by Steve, seconded by Dan. Thank you. Any discussion on that? 
Steve, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. And through you, Mayor Lennox, um, I just wanted to, to bring this out to, to public just because I think this is a great program that we have here at the council. And uh, it's nice to see that uh, local businesses are still using this to improve their own locations and that this is a fund that, uh, that we have for our local businesses to better themselves and their appearance. And uh, wanna thank uh, Dale for making, uh, making this possible as well. So that's the only reason I wanted to bring this up was because it's a great program and it's being well used and continues to be well used throughout uh, the township and for our local businesses. Great, thanks, Steve. Any other questions or comments? Okay, all those in favor? That's carried, thank you. We'll move on to 6A. This is in regard to the agreement with Cache Developments on regarding Preston Street. And the recommendation that reads as follows, that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Wellington North receive report OPS 2022-26, being a report on Cache Developments Inc. Arthur Inc. Service Finance Agreement for Preston Street North. And further, the council agrees to the cost sharing of Preston Street reconstruction, with the township's cost being at a maximum cost of $308,086.42 plus applicable taxes. And further, the council directs staff to include a council directed project for the reconstruction of Preston Street North in the 2023 capital budget. Could I get a mover and a seconder for that, please? Moved by Steve, seconded by Lisa. And we'll open the floor for discussion. Steve, go ahead. Thank you again through you, uh, Mayor Lennox. I just wanted to point this out. I think this is a great uh, private and public uh, partnership uh, for the Cache Development and Preston Street. And uh, it's nice to see that moving forward. And we're having a, um, the build that's going on there and having uh, houses available for, uh, for people in Arthur and uh, in our township. And I hope this is a, a sign of uh, a partnership that we can uh, do in the future as well. Thank with you. With developers. Any other questions or comments? Matt, I just had a quick question for you and this is uh, I have no concern with anything in the recommendation. I just, I was just thinking that we had included something in the 2022 budget for Preston Street, um, but I, I couldn't remember for sure. And just, can you remind me whether we did include something for that? Go ahead. Yep. Yeah. Through you, Mayor Lennox. Um, so there is a, it's still outstanding shave and pave project for Preston Street South. Um, but then also over the last year and a half, uh, council approved a, about a $21,500 budget for the design of Preston Street North, which, which is now obviously complete with this agreement being before you. But those are two recent projects related to Preston Street that, that council has approved. Okay. Great, thank you for that clarification. Any other questions or comments? Okay, all those in favor? That's carried, thank you. We'll move on to 6E. I think this is the one where Councillor Yake had to declare conflict. So we have a recommendation here that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Wellington North receive report OPS 2022-24 being a report on the proposed agreement with the Ontario Clean Water Agency for the period of 2023 to 2025. And further, the council award the township's wastewater treatment services contract for the period of 2023 to 2025 to Aqua. And further, the council authorized the mayor and clerk to sign the bylaw to enter into the agreement. And further, the council waived the requirement for a competitive process as detailed within the township's purchasing and procurement policy. Could I get a mover and a seconder for that, please? Moved by Steve, seconded by Lisa. Any discussion on that one? Okay, just, uh, I just wanted to make a quick comment that uh, certainly uh, inflation is affecting us on this uh, file as well. So uh, it's a, a significant cost increase, but that's not completely unexpected. And uh, Aqua has done uh, very well for us in the past in terms of making sure we're compliant and operating our facilities. So I think this is the right decision going forward. So any, any final questions or comments? Okay, all those in favor? That's carried, thank you. And that brings us to the end of our items for consideration. Oops. 
And any notice of motion this afternoon? Okay, seeing none, we'll move to community group meeting program report. Anybody have anything they'd like to report on there? Steve, go ahead. Uh, we just have uh, the SBCA uh, meeting coming up on uh, Thursday, and it's actually going to be in person for the first time in quite a quite a while. So, uh, it'd be nice to see the uh, the rest of the uh, board there as well, and then uh, we're going to tour the uh, Safe Village as well. So it'll be uh, neat to see that. I haven't seen it for a number of years since I've been on their board as well. So, uh, it'd be nice to see that in person again. Um, yeah, and then uh, later on we'll uh, have a discussion with the uh, with the budget at the uh, SVCA level as well. So I'll uh, inform you when we uh, get done all of that budget talk, so. Okay. Thanks, Steve. And any, of, any others, anyone would like to discuss? I don't really have anything to discuss per se. I think they're all in the um, upcoming events. Um, just a reminder that Mount Morrison District Chamber of Commerce has their annual general meeting and I have Arthur District Chamber of Commerce tomorrow 5 30 so late afternoon and their AGM's coming up too. Uh, Wellington North Cultural Roundtable we decided to um, postpone our next meeting so I believe we're meeting in December um, next. Okay thanks. Any, any others? <laughs> I think Steve has his mic off. He was referring to the election. <laughs> but I, I just did want to mention briefly to the uh, opening for the uh, parquet in uh, downtown Mount Forest uh, in cooperation with the BIA. Uh, it's It was really nice to see a bunch of uh, people out to, to to open that uh, new amenity to help make our downtown more attractive. And the thing I was really struck by is uh, we have a, not a new business to town, but new ownership in one of the businesses in town. And they came over and brought food uh, with them because they were so excited to uh, have this new parquet and were supportive of the BIA and in making our downtown more attractive. So uh, there's uh, lots of good things happening with the BIA and it's uh, great to see uh, so some support uh, around that. And also just uh, had the, the pleasure to attend the uh, uh, Louise Marshall Hospital Auxiliary celebration. They uh, celebrated 100 years uh, in, of service uh, this, this past week. And in my uh, welcoming remarks, uh, I, had the, I made the comment that uh, the hospital auxiliary is older than penicillin, just to underline how much change has happened in the last hundred years. So it's uh, great to have a uh, group of volunteers in service to uh, our healthcare that we in enjoy close to home, so. And with that, we'll move to bylaws. So we have two bylaws, we'll have to deal with them separately. So if we deal with the first one, the bylaw number 110-22 be read a first, second and third time and enacted. Can I get a mover and a seconder for that please? Moved by Steve. Seconded by Lisa. Uh, any discussion on that? Okay, all those in favor? And then our second bylaw, which deals with the aqua contract. Uh, so the recommendation will be that bylaw number 111 22 be read a first, second, and third time and enacted. Can I get a mover and a seconder for that, please? Moved by Steve, seconded by Lisa. I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion on that one? <clears throat> All those in favor? That's carried. Thank you. We'll move on to our cultural moment. And the uh, cultural moment today is the uh, Mount Forest Cemetery. The Mount Forest Cemetery was established in 1816. The cemetery is approximately 15 acres in size. And although it is located in Southgate, the cemetery is owned and administered by the Township of Wellington North. In 1872, a formal master plan was developed that established sections that were named for the convenience of physically locating graves. On average, there are about 45 to 50 burials each year. In 1907, there were 111 burials with 
50 alone in November of that year. An iron fence along the front was erected in 1937. This was followed by the main entrance gate in 1958, and it's pictured in their agenda package here. The, the pillars and sign feature we see today were donated by the McKellar family in memory of Mr. Neil McKellar. The mortuary chapel was built in 1947 and was dedicated on July 6th at the time of the old boys reunion. Over 7,000 plots or niches have been sold since the cemetery was first established and the Mount Forest Cemetery has been included on the cultural roundtables list of historic sites and places. The cultural roundtable also worked with the township on improving public access to historic burial records and currently over 7,700 records can be found on the uh, website uh, www.findagrave.com slash cemetery slash 2151397 slash Mount Forest Mount dash forest dash cemetery. <clears throat> In 2021, summer student Morgan conducted walking tours of the cemetery during Wellington North Culture Days. And in 2022, we were fortunate to have her back once again. Tours will be held on October 29th and November 5th and will run from 1 to 2 p.m. and 3 to 4 p.m. Reservations can be made by contacting Brianna at the Township Office. That was submitted by the uh, Wellington North Cultural Roundtable. Your cultural moment for October the 11th. Uh, before we moved into closed session, I'll just uh, draw your attention to the announcements and so on. Uh, had to have some discussion about it. The culture days are continuing to run uh, through till October 16th. The uh, Mount Forest Chamber of Commerce and Awards Excellence are this Thursday night at 7 p.m. The uh, Municipal Advance Pool uh, in the Arthur area is October the 15th from 10 to 3 at the arena. Uh, Digital Main Street Workshop uh, coming Monday, October 17th. And the Arthur AGM and Dinner and Service Excellence Awards is uh, October the 19th. And of course, election day is the 24th. Next meeting of the Cultural Roundtable is the 27th and Parks, Recreation, Parks and Leisure will meet November 1st. Okay. With that said, we'll move into a closed session. So- Oh, Andy, I just- Yeah, sorry, Dan. I just, uh, in I know just in regards to the meetings and that type of thing that's coming up, I know on November 1st, the recreation meeting had been uh, moved to November 1st, but Wellington North Power scheduled a meeting the same day once again <laughs> this, in, no in November. So I don't know, uh, I, I just maybe pass that on to Steve if he wants to uh, make that change. Yeah, good catch, I think Dan. I think the Wellington North Power, uh, I think we need to move forward with the Wellington North Power uh, meeting for sure. So you might want to make a change, Steve. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. We'll, uh, uh, Matt and uh, Mandy and I will put our heads together and uh, come up with another date for sure. Okay. Thanks for that. Uh, thanks for letting me know. No problem. Okay. Okay. So we close session. So we have a recommendation here that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Wellington North go into a meeting at 328 p.m. that is closed to the public under subsection 239 2 of the Municipal Act 2001, specifically to deal with item D, labor rate relations or employee negotiations, and item E, litigation or potential litigation, including matters before administrative tribunals affecting the municipality or local board. Could I get a mover and a seconder for that, please? Moved by Lisa, seconded by Dan. All those in favor? That's carried. We are enclosed. Yeah, go ahead. We'll just take a couple minutes uh, break here before we get rolling again. <laughs> 